Next year's 13.5 is here. Let's just check out their official blog post, see what's new, what's gonna change, and if there is anything you should know about this release. Vercel is one of those companies which focuses heavily on developer experience, right? One of their core strong points in the worlds of AWS, Heroku, Google Cloud, Azure, everything is that they focus a lot on developer tooling, developer experience. That means that they not only build toolings, like, I mean, they own literally next years, but they also have the best in class infrastructure to host that and of course all the CLI and the tooling and everything the bundler everything they want to bring under their own umbrella so if you look at this blog post right off the bat you can see that in a glance there have been a lot of work on you know making next year's fast so you can see 22% fast local server startup and 29% HMR there is better memory allocation as well there is a new feature this optimized package imports which I'm not exactly sure about but it breaks our build on code damn so we haven't upgraded to next year's 13.5 yet and over 438 bucks patch so of course like you know patching more bucks always is better so let's start with this startup time and fast refresh time so one of the things which i remember which i think uh, the founder of Vercel also the ceo of Vercel also mentioned on his twitter was that app router significantly improves a lot of web metrics as well. The first content full paint, how fast and how responsive your app feels like. But still, I feel like personally, we use app router in a couple of our internal website tools and it's a little brittle right now, to say the least. I mean, it shows that, you know, top websites are adopting even though like most of the websites still use pages router, but app router is something which next year inspired, got inspired from Remix. And then they shipped working version together a few months back, which was full of bugs. You can see with this release, like, I mean, patching bugs always is good, but if you have 438 bucks in your app router, that means that something was not, you know, good enough in the initial release as well. And if you go through this, you will see that a lot of these things I think belong to app router itself. So you can see that most of these bug fixes are more or less inside app routers because pages router was already super stable, right? Next.js has worked for years on pages router and then they brought in a paradigm shift with the app router stuff. So it's interesting to see where app router goes. Right now it's something like, you know, just like a new tooling, just like bun, for example, it has edges, it has things you can't do with it, but still people would try to start using it because it's fancy, it's new, it's it seems performant, it seems promising. But one thing I have realized over the last few years, you know, is that it's usually a bad idea to jump on hype tools right away. I mean, we did already make a mistake like that with Prisma. I still don't understand like why people use Prisma uh, on production workloads. There are a lot of things which I feel are wrong with Prisma and which are right with Prisma as well. Their schema is great, but their ORM is super bad. So yeah, I mean, that, that's one mistake. It seemed like very shiny tool, but it wasn't. Similarly, Bun seems super shiny, but we can't use it at all in our workflow. Our front-end build crashes and our back-end build just fails because there is the read line sync package is required by IO Mock Redis, which is a library we use in our testing infrastructure. So Bun doesn't support that, so we can't use that. And again, App Router also has a lot of edge cases and bugs still. If you go to issues on Vercel on Next.js repo, you will find, you will find that this technology is great. It brings in a lot of features, but just give it some time to stabilize right so one thing like i was saying one thing i've learned is that you should give hot technologies which you feel are will be the future at least sometime if you're incorporating them into mature projects because what happens with mature projects or something which is moderately complex is that something is gonna blow up which is outside of your control right as long as you are using a technology which is stable and you are building a cutting edge wrapper on top of it for example Vercel. Vercel can afford to use app router on their own infrastructure because these are the guys building it, right? So if it breaks for some edge case on the, of their own, they have a team of engineers which can fix it. But if it breaks for you, you have to file an issue. You have to open, you know, a reproduction issue completely. You have to wait for the team to see, or you have to, you know, just do some workarounds to figure out that why is this not working for you or what to do to make it work for you. So although it's all impressive, I still wouldn't personally jump on any app router project for a moderate to large size project because it still has some rough edges, right? At least give it some time before, I don't know if they would announce next year's 14 on next con or not, but maybe a major version release would be 
a good benchmark to wait for right less memory usage is always better hmr is always better one thing which i again don't understand is i mean i get it but not exactly is why nextjs does not use wheat so wheat is a very popular bundler which supports you know is built on es build it supports react nextjs has just gone out of its way and maybe they because they already bought turbo repo and turbo pack so they are bundling they're building their own successor to webpack which is an extremely hard job to do let me tell you that because it not only just breaks compatibility with webpack it's also like a completely different tooling altogether right so i don't know how i mean it's it sounds great on paper that you know you want to build your own bundler and you want to just you know make it very tightly integrated with your ecosystem but when you have a great enough choice already in the market wheat is good enough it could have been like you know a faster uh, a better way to get next year shipping out more important things than a bundler but again like i said rust powered successor it's not exactly super fast compared to wheat as well even though the benchmark showed like crazy results when actual calculations and real time things were run it was not exactly super fast compared to wheat so you won't feel a massive 10x difference like bun makes node js feel so so i'm also a little bit skeptical on that but yeah i mean i understand from a business point of view they have already made an investment in turbo repo turbo pack so they want to bring that tooling under themselves so there is one improvement which i don't fully understand what they have done is that they have optimized package imports so i know that a lot of libraries what they do is that they would just have a single package and then you know they will just re-export everything from their full package right so if you have like a material ui icons so you could have thousands tens of thousands of icons and it will just have you can just import it with a single library right they have made a breakthrough uh, in optimizing package imports not doesn't sound like just an improvement so kudos to that but what is this exactly and why this is a breakthrough you will have to go through this actual pr to understand i did study this a bit but i mean long story short as long as you're a developer and uh, you know you're using some of these defaults which are you know automatically optimized nextjs can take care of that if you want to include more packages which you feel you know are something which can be optimized by nextjs then it gives you this package name option optimize package in both and you can just provide that it does include some defaults by default so that's that's a good thing but yeah i mean overall who cares if this improves performance right so i mean who cares that means that who cares about the internal details as long as you know the end result is great so that's that's amazing to see that they are making some work especially on production because that is where next year is still behind a lot of these new guys like astro for example and you know swelt even i think swelt kit so all of that is leaving next year a little bit behind so they have to like you know constantly rework on their javascript bundle size and things they are packaging and everything so that they bring down those cold starts down so glad to see that happening okay so they have made improvements to next image as well we use the next image component but we do not use their versal api so versal does not ship server images simply because it's just ridiculously expensive to be honest uh, if you look at other providers which are like CDN provider images, Versal pricing just doesn't make sense for shipping images. But again, like my issue with Versal pricing is an ongoing thing always. But what I want to point out is that they have now this unstable get image props function, which actually lets you render things without image tag. Now, we internally have a kind of variation of this function ourselves in Quota. The reason for this, the reason this is so important is because a lot of times you don't want to use image directly. For example, what if you want to optimize, let's say open graph image, or what if you want to optimize an asset, which isn't like, you know, for any number of reasons, it isn't directly an image tag. So in those cases, you want the href, you want the optimized URL, but you don't want the, I mean, the all the boilerplate and everything which image tag wants, right? So now next is natively supports like getting that into your code then of course there are you know hundreds of bugs fixed in next year's 13.5 so it's always always a good idea to upgrade update and you know just make sure you are on the latest build so overall i think this is a pretty good release i mean not feature pack nothing that much but i think if anything this is an important thing right bug fixes are always good performance improvements are always good so it's a i mean if it works for you then just go ahead and upgrade it and you know just forget about it but make sure you test it doesn't work for us for some reason i'll we'll have to check why there is a cryptic error which we get on code dam when we upgrade from 13.4 to 13.5 i am thinking this is because of this 
change most likely because we we do a lot of trickery and magic ourselves with vs code and everything which powers our ide so just to just to let you know what i mean by that if you go to code dam and if you open any of these playgrounds you're going to see that there is a vs code like interface which boots up now this actually is a variation of monaco package itself right and monaco and vs code source code is it's like you know it's it's too much <laughs> it's a lot of modules so in order to bundle this properly, we have to write our own magic stuff, which probably breaks with this optimized package imports and everything. So probably, I mean, we'll have to dig deeper into what's going on over here. But long story short, this is a decent release, yeah. I mean, I think that they haven't unleashed a lot of good stuff because they are waiting for next conf. But I mean, <laughs> the PR or the release might be getting a little bit too much to not you know, be released because if you have 400, 500 bucks fixed already, you would want it to push to the production, right? So maybe that's what they did. But the big stuff, the good stuff, I think it's still reserved for next year's con. What do you think about it? Let me know in the comments below. That is all for this video. I'm going to see you in the next one really soon.